Hello, the game is EverCraft Online. This is the EverQuest Minecraft hybrid game you never knew you needed, but you really do. It's a blast. I had so much fun playing it in the alpha, and I look forward to upcoming alphas. So let me uh, fill you in on what this game is about. So I'll just let the character creation play in the background so you can get a feel for the classes and the art style and the races. Uh, but basically, this is a MMO that's being developed by a small indie company. Uh, I believe it's Hidden Tree. Mm, I don't have a lot of information about the team, but uh, what they said is there's like, I think three, four people, maybe I could be wrong about that, that work on this daily. They got a whole bunch of other people to contribute to it, sound, art, design, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, they're, they're working on it, and they've been doing a couple alphas. I've been waiting to get into an alpha, and this is the first alpha I was able to get into to try it out. Because it really looked cool. It's Minecraft style with EverQuest-type gameplay. And, you know, initially I was like, eh, we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. But it's I really liked it, the art and the, the, what these guys got made and how the pixel art works with the EverQuest-type gameplay. It's great. I think they really have a huge success here. I think they have a huge potential for success. And after playing the Alpha, the game felt more polished than Pantheon did after seven years of work. <laughs> so, you know, there's that. Um, people were grouping, having a good time. I didn't get a chance to group a lot because I was trying out all the classes and it was only like I only had one day to play. Like I had like eight or nine hours to play. Um, but I was definitely having a blast. But as you can see, the class race combinations are very much like uh, EverQuest. Uh, there are some deviations, like ogres can be monks, and they have a war wizard, which is like a melee wizard uh, hybrid. Uh, and there's some there's some other things. There's, it's, they're still working on it. Like I was walking through, I'm like, what's going on? Enchanters don't have clarity, but wizards get the clarity. And they were like, oh, we're just, you know, playing with it for now, trying to see, trying to balance things out and see how we want to do it. So like I said, still very, very early access. Um, there's no funding. They want no funding for this. There's no way to support them. You can't buy into access. You can't donate money. Um, you know, their, their stance right now is they don't want any funding or access uh, until it's ready to be playable. I don't know if that'll change in the future, but everybody who was playing it was like, how can I buy in on this? How can I support you guys? You know, do you guys get any supporter packs? Like, people were just ready to throw money at them in the alpha. They were so impressed. And uh, it's it's fun. So, it's Minecraft graphics. It's not Minecraft. You're not dropping down blocks and building stuff and digging stuff. It's, think of, like, an MMO with just Minecraft-style graphics. And it's very cool. It has good sound effects. Uh, let's get into some gameplay so I can kind of show you. This is my first, like, looking at character creation, just seeing, you know, what what the style looks like the hair you know very limited uh but but kind of cool uh let's let's get into the game now and i'll show you a little bit about the gameplay so this is my very first login right i'm like i don't know what's going on this is exactly how the game looks when you load it i think i typed slash help and then seeing that there are some emotes and i was testing out the emote so slash help will give you all the commands if you get into the alpha what's available and what you can and can't do um, not sure how I want to structure this video because I want to show this first bit of gameplay here. Uh, just kind of show you what it's like getting started. It's me poking around the UI and just trying to figure everything out. So I'm just going to watch it along with you and, um, you know, maybe do some commentary. And then I think in the end I'll just, I'll, I'll do some, uh, just some different, show you some different classes and then maybe some you know, gameplay here and there of combat and stuff like that. So it might be a little bit of a long video just to kind of squeeze all that in because it takes time. I can't just put a 30-second clip of this in, you know, just so that you get your starter note, which is what I'm reading now. Um, tells you where to go. Every class gets that very ever questy, right? Um, it basically just tells you to go to your guild master, which will start near, and I had no problem finding. So you got your inventory and character, sh character sheet, and then you have a crafting inventory. Um, and then these are your skills. So, you know, as you use them, they go up and then your different abilities, which we don't have who too many right now. This is where your, you know, uh, pet commands and, and stuff like that would be, there is a macro system in the game, but it's very limited. So this is basically what you have to work with. 
Again, this is a very early stage development of this game, but it's very flushed out for what it is. You know, other player running around doing his thing. Jump works, uh, takes stamina. You got your trainer, right? Just like in EverQuest, you can train up all your different stuff. You got the 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 quest text uh, click for more information kind of thing. This is awesome. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to show it to you here, but all that text is recorded into a journal, and you can reference it later. Every single NPC that you talk to gets logged into a journal. So I'll, I'll get into that in a second. So you give them your stuff. Uh, you, know, you get your apprentice thing, and he tells you to go do some stuff. He'll start you on a quest line. Uh, it's pretty standard. Um, but yeah, so the journal was... I, I was blown away by that. I was like, why don't more games do this? This is awesome. Every single NPC you talk to gets logged. It has their name, and you can click on their name and see all the conversation that you had with them. So what what I ended up doing, because I don't like reading all this stuff. I want to I want to move on. I want to read it later. So what I ended up doing, I click on all the options. I get all the information, and then I'll, I'll read it later when I have time. And I really like that. And, and here's the best thing. It has a freaking search feature. So if uh, a rat skin drops and you're like... Didn't somebody tell me something about they wanted rat skins? You can just go into your journal and search rat skin. It'll search all the text and look for all the NPCs who's ever said rat skin to you. And you can see if somebody's like, hey, go get me some rat skins. Absolutely simplistic. Absolutely perfect. I, I was blown away by how simple and awesome that was. And, like, why didn't I ever think of that? And why didn't other game designers ever think of it? Anyway, so I was really impressed by their journal system. They don't have quests. I mean, they have quests, but they don't have, like, you open your journal, and it, here's the list of quests you have to do. You have to go get pelts and rat teeth and blood, you know. Then it's not like that. You have to remember that a guy gave you a quest. What was I, what am I typing? Is there any... Oh, was there any run or sprint? Yeah, there's no sprint. I think I got uh, PST post-traumatic stress disorder, PSTD, whatever. I think I got that from Pantheon, where you have to constantly sprint, constantly sprint, constantly hold down your shift button. I do not like that. I'd, I'd rather just run at one speed, but it, it felt a little slow, so I was asking, is there like a run-walk kind of thing? But it's fine, because, you know, you can get uh, so, it's not Spirit of the Wolf, it's something else, but Sal, for you Southerners or pig farmers. Um... But yeah, they have buffs similar to run speed buffs and stuff in here that make it run pretty fast. The GMs are running around because of an alpha and just like they'll pop up and cast it on you. All right, so this is my first experience with combat. I wanted to pick a rat in case spiders had poison. Combat music, which they do have an option to turn it on and off. There's your simplistic inventory. Getting the EverQuest, EverQuest vibes yet? I do like if you look over to the right side that when you get skill ups, you can see it like actually like working towards the next level as you're as you're using it. So I do like that instead of just a random skill popping up saying, "Hey, you got a skill up." It kind of like shows you the progress to your next skill up. They have linking, so if you can see where I just looted rat whiskers, you can click on that and see that. You can link items in chat already. <laughs> Interface is better than Pantheon so far. Yeah, I was, I was just instantly, I was like, wow, I can customize the interface. You can go into the chat and customize and filter out all the chats so you can make new tabs. Like, I made one for tells. Um... I made one for, like, all the... Because it gets a little spammy sometimes with, say, with NPCs. So I made a chat for all the global chat and stuff like that that a player might say. So that I won't miss... If I wanted to go back and say, what did that player say while I was fighting or whatever? I could go back and scroll it. So, yeah, very, um... 
very nice interface. They don't have a chat font size because, you know, on my monitor is very tiny. Um, but what they do have is a UI scaling, which scaled the chat font, basically. Um, and then you just resize the window is what I end up doing. You'll see that in later later bits of gameplay. So I think I'll fight this no pop and then we'll switch over and I'll start showing you some classes. By the way, monks felt strong starting out. It re they really just tore stuff up fast compared to, like, caster classes. Which I think is the way it should be, because caster classes do get a little more powerful. But uh, I'm sure they're, they'll balance stuff out. Oh, am I playing with the options? Let me, let me keep it running just so you can see what the different options are, because I think I'm going to play with them in a second after this fight or during the fight. Just let this run so you can get a visual of what the different options they have in game already are. I don't know what hot button countdown is. But the options were very, very, very simple. I did like see that horizontal bar. Uh, I didn't realize what that was until later. It's like the World of Warcraft information bar. It shows you your experience, how much money you got, stuff like that up at the top. There's your keybinds if you want to, sorry for scrolling through them so fast, but if you want to pause the video, that's fine. And I don't think I went into video and audio, which is very basic and simplistic. Um, you can do some clipping sizes and stuff like that. There we go. Um, I was getting, I think I was getting 144, which is what I got games capped to, the, res uh, the, the frequency of my monitor, refresh rate of my monitor. Um, I don't think it ever dipped under that. I don't remember. I, I, I honestly don't remember, but it ran all right. I got a pretty decent rig now, though, so it's, I don't have my old 13-year-old rig anymore. I got a 2070 Ti graphics card. So that's the UI scaling. So what I ended up doing was figuring out, like, I can just scale that UI up to, like, 1.2. And then I can finagle my chat bars or my chat windows down. And then that basically is the same thing as a font, font size increase. The only problem with that is it makes all it makes everything bigger, right? So like your inventory window and your journal and everything like that is going to be scaled up twenty percent. But it, it allowed me to be able to read what people were saying, so I was happy. Again, very early alpha access for this game. Is pre-alpha? Pre-alpha. It's not even an alpha yet. As you can see, very, very, you know, very generous with the stats there. Um, but, you know, everything's broken down like, like uh, other MMOs as far as the stats display and, you know, classes, races, no drop, that kind of stuff. All right, let's check out some other classes. So this is my Beast Lord, and I just kind of want to start here because this was a little clip of i seen some other players interacting with a GM. GM was buffing them, and they were buffing him, and... Yeah, I was just kind of, I was running around doing my starter quests, just, there's a little starter town for the Beast Lord, that's what I am, this is my Beast Lord, where you gotta just run around, make deliveries, and I gotta make collars to capture or, you know, get my Beast Lord, my first Beast Lord pets. I was doing that, just trying to figure things out, you know, um, 
this is really the first character I played other than my monk real quick, so I was just kind of like checking it out. Uh, but one thing I want you to notice here is the day-night cycle. So if you noticed on my, the clip for my monk, it started turning night when I logged out. It, this this game has a really good day night cycle where you know it does get dark without lights but lights work gms just traded me some potions which by the way i totally final fantasy those potions meaning like when i play final fantasy i never use them i never use a single charge of those potions like they were too precious they were too precious for me i didn't want to uh <laughs> i didn't want to use them and therefore i never used them i never got around to it but, um, yeah, it was just cool. These are two ogres. Look like shamans or something like that. Um, but also, I want to show you the journal. So this is the journal I was talking about. See all the NPCs on the side? That was just, They're all just the NPCs I talked to in the starter town. And I was looking for a specific one. Asking these guys for help. But that whole journal is searchable. So you can search all the text message, all the text that any all the NPCs said to you. Which I just think it's so simplistic and so genius instead of having a actual quest log that tells you exactly what to do and where to go um but at the same time you know it's it's free it's uh, what's i want to what do i want to say it's not free flowing it's you're independent and you have to remember what quest you want to do but at the same time you can look back at any time and see exactly what was said so you're never lost you know uh, you might not know where something is and the gm here is <laughs> it's helping me i didn't realize like I, I kept thinking like they wanted me to make deliveries and I kept thinking they must want me to make a delivery to another town but a lot of the stuff was right in the same town is what I come to realize like I was overthinking it you know when I was looking for people which leads me to my next clip I did some traveling so here we go so this video will be long by the way but uh, because I want to put all this in there and I'm not probably going to do another video on this game for a while but I was out searching, so if you look in my inventory, you'll see two collars in the top. I first made a panther, like cat one, so I could have a cat pet, but I couldn't find a cat. So I made a brown rat one, and then I couldn't find a brown rat in the starting town. So I went on a journey. I was like, well, I can't find any here, so let me just follow this path and see where I go. Um, now you'll see my UI is a little different here because I had time to play a little bit. Um... It's now like 10, 10 a.m. in the morning, so I had a few hours. And, you know, you can see the experience bar up top, you know, the icons, time, money, that kind of stuff. I got my UI looking looking nice. You notice there's a con system on the portrait of the guy, so I can see he uh, hates me and he will attack me. And he's way higher level than me. So it's all, it's all pretty cool. But I wanted to put this part in so you can see the travel. You can see the landscape. So I'm running from the starter town over to what is kind of like the main city, but it's also a starter town for some of the other classes. You know, nice pathway systems they put in. Like, that that guy's neutral, but higher level. You know, signs that you can read. Very Minecrafty. So, I'll just, I'll just be quiet for a second, and then uh, you can just kind of watch the landscape, I guess. And I'll finish chatting later. and the vibes while you're traveling it's very nice very relaxing i liked it it was very minecraft relaxing kind of other than me being scared crapless that something would attack me um you'll see random travelers like this with quests and stuff like that so it's very cool
So I was very excited to have found a large brown rat. So what you gotta do is kinda calm it with the spell, the spear bond, and then hand it the collar. But notice it says Greenwood brown rat. And not a large brown rat. So it didn't work. Now, at the time, I didn't know why it wouldn't work. I wasn't sure if you even were supposed to trade it to him. Um, but as it turns out, I'll just give you the spoilers. I couldn't find it. The Greenwood's the starting location, and I couldn't find the brown rats there. They're inside the city. I was looking outside the city where the actual, like, things you kill were. There's some brown rats inside the city right next to the Beastmaster Trainer. Um, that you're supposed to utilize and that's what threw me off. I thought you were just supposed to go out into the wild so and then <laughs> I'm gonna cut this short. Well, actually, maybe I'll let it go. I think I'm real close to the town So I come up and this is the this is the main city I think or the the starter city for other classes like the necromancer and the enchanter and stuff like that um, But I found a brown rat here. So I was like, okay, this literally says a brown rat and it still wouldn't work I was like what? And I think I asked somebody, I ran into another Beastmaster who had a rat. I was like, where did you get the rat from? And he's like, oh, they're right behind the trainer. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> like, I ran all over for like an hour and a half looking for rats. But here, I'll just leave this in since it's daytime. It looks nice. And this is the first view of the city I, I've had. Yeah, see, it says eight brown rat. I was like, all right, let me try this. Finally, finally a brown rat. I was really starting to get frustrated. I was just like, I ran all the way here. And I found a rat and it doesn't work. So that's why I was just like really looking at it. And then I was like, well, let me just go in here and see what's going on. And then all the players running around. It was just fabulous. The Flopsy McWhisker face was like a Easter. I think this was Easter Sunday I was playing this. What's the date? 3.30? Was that Easter Sunday? But they had like an Easter egg event. I, I, I know I didn't do it, so I don't know what it involved. Anyway, let's get uh, let's get on to the next clip. That was long enough. So here I was just. Uh, this is my first successful uh, taming or getting a pet for the beast loop. I just. Talking to this guy, I realized, like, maybe it's the sickly pups. And I was overthinking everything. And he's the guy that helped me out with the, uh, finding out that it was a brown rat. They were behind the, they were behind the trainer <laughs> in the town. I figured it was going to be outside the town like this. So I just wanted to show you this little bit of a clip, you know. You get a pet as a beast master. Um, yeah, the pets are pretty good uh, for all the classes, like mage, necro, beast master. They all felt about the same. I'm sure they got a lot of balancing to do, but they were talking about nerfing the pets like they were too strong or something. I was like, mm. they they felt pretty strong, at, uh, like at level one, level two. But when you were like level three, level four, the pets were a little bit weaker because they were fighting level three, level four mobs. So I don't know how much they need to be nerfed, but like I said, pre-alpha, I'm sure they got a lot of balancing to do. I just hope they don't destroy pet glasses in this game. I would be so sad because you know they're some of my favorites. All right, let me uh, let me see what I got next. Alright, the Necromancer. So, I'm just going to go ahead and let this play from here. So you can look at the spells, the descriptions. So you can kind of get a feel of what, uh, what spells are available. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. So starting out, money for spells is a big deal. Getting all your level one spells, um, and then getting bags. They're the first things you need to do, and really the best way to get bags is buy them from the merchant. So starting out in the game, first tip is get your get your spells or your abilities, get money for them by killing stuff, and then get money for some bags. You want to fill all your slots up with bags, and then all your bank slots up as well. And it's like Pantheon. The necro starts with a nuke instead of the life tap, which is weird. I thought that was kind of weird. Uh, but the life tap's very good. It's stronger than the nuke, which is, again, weird. I don't know why they do that. Again, it's early It's early, early development, so I'm sure a lot of that stuff will probably change. Just feel free to pause if you want to read the spell descriptions. Um, but this is the Necro starting area, which I thought was really cool how they did that. Um, when you start out as a Necro, you got to figure out how to get down here. And it has a little hint in your um, in your note. But it's basically, it's underneath the city. So you have the city above, and, you know, there's some KOS dudes, just like Freeport. And then you have the sewers underneath, and the, the, the evil is underneath, which I, you know, I just love that. It's fitting. It's very, uh, I think EQ did a good job. Excuse me. EQ did a good job when they did that, and um, you know this game obviously thought that was good to do as well. Uh, but what I wanted, why I'm showing you this clip is I'm going to start doing some combat soon. Um, what it is, the Shadow Knight spells. I'm going to do some combat so you can see the uh, Necro fight a little bit, and then I die so you can see what the death looks like, and then I'll move on to the next class. I think. Again, this is going to be a very long video, but you know, I just I want to put a video out so you can see all the stuff. Like a lot of content creators do so much editing, you can't get a real feel for anything. And I think if you want to jump around this video and look at little bits and pieces, feel free to do it. But I want to put the whole I want to put it in there so you can see what the game's really like and get a kind of feel what it's actually like. So now I'm going down here to fight some uh, rats and stuff in the sewer, see what I can find, try to get some XP. The fact that there's corpses all around should have told me something. Now, I don't have a pet at this point, so uh, Neckers need a um, item. I think it's like a it's basically like bone chips. You can get it from anything though; it doesn't have to be from skeletons. Like, the rat could drop it, you know. Um, anything can drop. The, I think it's like bone fragment or something like that. So anything that can drop it is, can drop it, which I liked. I like that you don't have to go out and find skeletons. You know, if you kill a living thing, a living thing has bones. It actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, there's the nuke, which I don't know. Looks looks kind of cool, you know, little purpley colors. I don't know why we get a nuke and not the life tap when the life tap's level 1. I gotta stop focusing. Yeah, there's the bone fragments. You see, you can get them from anything. So here I'm like, oh, I'm gonna try a skeleton. He's level one. Ah, what the heck? No! 
So I was like, this is no good. So they social aggroed. I didn't realize it, and I was hoping Bones McGee there didn't social aggro me too. So I figured I'd run back to the guards in the down below. All right, I figured they would save me. There's little sentries there, because they kill other players if other classes come down. But look, I was like, oh no. I was like, trainer, save me, save me, master. Nope, 100% knew I was going to die here at this point. I was just like, all right, let me try to take one out if I can, so at least I get the experience from it. And that's it. Back to bind. So your soul-bound items stay with you, but other than that, you're, everything's on your corpse. Your money stays with you currently. I don't know if that's going to change. Um, but yeah, you have to go get your corpse to get all the other items and equipment you want. Um, in the alpha, they had a corpse summoner. I think it was like one silver per level or something like that. That you had to pay uh, per your character level to have your corpse summon from anywhere in the world. But, um, yeah, it's going to be a, you know, it's going to be like EQ. I'm not going to, I'm going to cut it here because I don't want to give the spoilers of how you first get to the Necro Guild. Let's see what my next clip's going to be. All right, so here I just want to show you the Enchanter pet. And you can also see my little Necro pet. So I got my pet up and running. He's a tiny little cute little skeleton. But look at this Enchanter pet. So this is the, like the little illusion pet in EverQuest that only attacks when you get attacked. In, in this game, currently, it, you can control it like a pet, but look how awesome that looks. That's awesome. Why didn't EverQuest think of that for the invisible dude? I was just like, that made me want to play the Enchanter right there. I think I think shortly after, I was just like, all right, let me drop my Necro real quick, and I'm playing Enchanter. So just wanted to show that. Moving on. So after I seen that cool Enchanter pet, I went and made an Enchanter. However, this is the Wizard, wizard Spellbender, so I'm just going to throw this in here for archival purposes uh, so we can see what the spell descriptions were and you can kind of get a feel for what the wizard's doing i didn't play a wizard i think i might have played it like just new just to see what its nukes look like but I, I didn't level a wizard up at all but i'll just kind of put this in here one thing i do want to note is listen fender music That's when I seen wizards get clarity. I was like, wait, what? And then here are the uh, enchanter spells. And then I'll do War Wiz next. So that uh, reanimated weapon, you have to do a quest to get a bag. And then you can use that bag to convert those reanimated weapons into your pet. Um, and it has like two slots with some weight reduction. But it was kind of weird to me. So it's like you only get three, three pets. Unless you want to use your inventory for those swords. But yeah, I'm just going to let this uh, let the spells play out. Just so for archival purposes. And so you can kind of get a feel with how they're setting up the enchanter. Was that a mage spell? Yeah, I think there's cross-class spells as well. Ouch. I didn't realize you could buy that. Lure item no drop. I didn't realize you could buy that um, pouch. And then again, that's one like, wait, what? Wiz? Wiz? Enchanters don't get it? Only Wiz get it? That kind of threw me off a little bit. Made me not want to play the Enchanter, to be honest with you. All right, let's move on to War Wiz spells. All right, and a real quick peek at the War Wiz spells, just for archival purposes, and, see, and you can see kind of how the class uh, is aligning. It's a it's a melee class that buffs like their weapons. I think um, I was watching one of the higher level dudes that were leveling up. He was soloing that I seen was a War Wiz. He seemed to be killing it. I think I just speed through these, by the way. So feel free to pause. I think I might pause and take a break on this video. My voice is starting to get worn out. And then I think I'll come back with some 
enchanter gameplay maybe and then some mage gameplay to finish it up the mage is what I ended up uh, by the time I got the mage like level 3 the server was over and I did some running around I might throw that in the end of the video if you just want to kind of see the landscape with no commentary all right so a little mage gameplay um, I came down to this area this little dirt area um, the mage uh, guild leader just gave me a quest and said come down here and kill these earth elementals for items you need for your quest. But I was only finding these sh stones and it turns out they're sharpening stones to make better weapons. But I wanted to show you a little bit of the pet gameplay, a little bit of the caster gameplay because I really kind of just skipped over that with the enchanter, skipped over it with the um, necro. I showed you like earlier stuff before they had their pets. And the pets are all the, exactly the same. They felt They all felt the same toughness damage durability and they all control the same so i figured let me just do it with the mage because the mage has that cool looking fireball effect whereas the necro has a life tap dd so it's just like a you know it's like a glow on the mob same with the enchanter they have a dd but so it's basically the same play style send the pet in nuke on do a little bit of melee so your pet doesn't die um of course he killed my pet <laughs> which happens um yeah i just want to kind of show this gameplay a little bit you know, actually actual some actual combat instead of just everything else summoning your pet reminds me of old necromancer summoning And again, this is the journal, right? So I think I was, I'm metting up, looking at the journal. I'm like, why is, why am I not getting anything? Let me make sure I'm in the right spot. So I'm just checking my quest. I really, I can't tell you how much I love this journal. It's so simplistic. You know, it just records the basic conversations with the NPCs. And then you can look at it anytime you want. It's searchable. I imagine that list is going to be huge. You probably got to filter it out like like NPCs in this town or something like that. And I never did get a chance to group. I think people start grouping a lot around 4 and 5 is when they start grouping. Is when soloing slows down. As, you know, it's, it is the way it is. If people can solo, they're going to solo. That's just the way. That's the way. That's why these games don't work. You got to make the games hard enough to where solo isn't really the best way to get ex experience by far. Because even if it's kind of okay, people would choose solo over bothering getting a group and dealing with people. <laughs> so that you, you kind of need that forced social, um, you know, where if you want better experience and a better, better loot, you, you're going to need to find five or six other people or whatever, four other people. So yeah, I think people start getting together around four or five, which is pretty typical in MMOs, um, even EverQuest. And then, then they start. Then that's when the PVE co-op starts getting a little better. All right, let me uh, let me go on. I don't want to sit here and meditate again. Let me find the next clip, and then we'll go from there. So I was running around towards the end of the night. And I found the developer edge. So it was like, you know, they have a boundary set where they're, you know, not developing any further. I was just exploring into the unpopulated areas of the world that they were exploring or developing. Just found this like hard boundary. I thought it was neat. So I think that's about it for the video. The next clip's going to be the credits of the people who are making the game. So you can see that. And then um, I'm going to do a full run from the main city or the starter city for the wizards and enchanters down to the uh, Greenwood, which is a starter city for like, I think Rangers, Druids and beast lords. It's about a 15 minute run. I'm not going to do any commentary on it. I'm just going to let it play. And then after that, I'm going to do another probably 15 minute run where I was just exploring. I was just running around exploring and I found this cool little, uh, 
religious sanctuary out in the end of the world. Um, and then I went AFK and something killed me. <laughs> and that, that'll be it for the video. So that'll probably be about an hour long video. So I hope you appreciated the, what I was able to show you here, getting all this footage and putting it all together for you, just so you can kind of get a better understanding of the game that these guys are working on. Again, I think it has a lot of potential. Um, I think it's, uh, I think it's, if they do this right, it's going to be a big hit. I think they're not going to be ready for how big this is going to be for them. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what the future holds. All I know is I'm anxious to play some more. So here's the credits. Um, let me scroll back up real quick here. But yeah, it was, um, I was asking about who was developing it. And they said like a few people work on it every day, but you know, there's some more people obviously here involved. They're, they're the ones that said actually go check the credit. So um, yeah, well, Hidden Tree is the dude who's making it. I don't know if he, that's the company. Uh, Skeeter is the guy who made, they said he's the guy who made um, the Enchanter Pet class. So good job on that, Skeeter. That thing looks awesome. The Enchanter Pet. I like the way that thing looks. All right, the next videos are going to be about 15 minutes of me running from the, the town to the Greenwood, which is the Druid Ranger starting area, and then probably 15 minutes of me exploring. Actually, let me throw this in here. I used this in another one of my videos for the TLP announcement. Um, <clears throat> this is I, I just want to throw this in here because it's group content. It's them fighting. I'm not in the group. I was just exploring. And I found them and was just like, okay, let me uh, let me watch them fight and just see how combat is. Let me check combat logs, see what they're doing, see how they're pulling, tanking. You know, that's it. So it's just like three quick minutes of this. And then, like I said, the next video is going to be, the next clip is going to be me running from the one town to the next, about 15 minute run. That's all I did. I, there's, a little, there's a little town in between, so you go from A to B to C. Um... And I just kind of wanted to show that run, um, in case anybody needs to know how to get to get there or not. I don't know. Just to kind of show you the landscape, really. And then the, after that, the next clip's going to be 15 minutes of me just exploring, just running around. I might even AFK for a little bit in it. I do know at the end I AFK'd. That's when I stopped the video. And when I came back, I was dead. I wish I would have left the video running so I could have seen what killed me. But uh, And then that will be the end of the video, so... If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please go ahead and subscribe. I'll definitely be making more Evercraft, Evercraft uh, content. Definitely interested in this game. Uh, I got some Pantheon videos going to be coming out. Probably just one Pantheon video, just reviewing the alpha. And then I have some uh, TLP content coming out very soon prior to the TLP starting. So sub, sub up and hit the bell notification if you want to, to get notified when that drops. Other than that, thanks for watching. Feel free to just end now or watch the watch the exploration and travel without the commentary. I'm going to sign off now and just let the rest of it roll. I'll talk to you guys later and see you in the next video.